Throughout history, there have been people who have committed some of the most heinous crimes fathomable. For those crimes, they have been convicted and sentenced to death. Welcome to Death Row Executions, where we take a look into the lives of society's worst offenders. And now, your host, Air. John Avalos Alba was born on June 26, 1955. In his adulthood, he was living in Collin County, Texas. By the year 1991, 36-year-old John had four children with different women and was living in an apartment with his 28-year-old wife, Wendy. John was not a good husband, and his wife, Wendy, grew more scared of him as time went on. On May 29, 1987, Wendy and John had an altercation at a bar, and John got so angry that he started to randomly swing a spiked metal ball and chain around. Police were called, but by the time they arrived, John had cooled down, so they left. Later that same night, police were conducting a traffic stop nearby, and John was seen speeding past them in his truck. As the car sped by, they heard Wendy yelling for help from inside of the truck. Cops left their traffic stop, got in their vehicle, and were on a high-speed chase to try and catch John. Eventually, John slammed on his brakes, jumped out of his truck, and started walking towards the officers while yelling at them at the same time. Cops tried arresting him, but he resisted arrest and refused to follow any directions. Instead, he chose to fight and kick the officers. Another incident in which John got in trouble with the law was in spring of 1991. Wendy called the police on John, and it was not the first time police had record of her calling them. On that particular day, when police arrived, Wendy had bruises on her face and body. John was arrested, but his anger shifted temporarily from Wendy to the police officers. While in handcuffs, he told the arresting officer that he knew where he lived and he was going to kill him and his family. Although the cops would later go on to testify against John, they let his threats go in that moment. John was released from prison fairly quickly, but Wendy or anyone else he felt the need to take advantage of was not in the clear. In June of 1991, John's niece wanted to have a sleepover, so a bunch of girls came to his apartment for a slumber party. One attendee accused John of inappropriately touching her, and the cops were called. John was charged with indecency. Not being able to leave in silence, while John was handcuffed, he screamed out to Wendy, Wendy, you better come get me out of jail or I'll kill you. Wendy did nothing to try and get John out of jail. Instead, she gained enough courage to move out of their shared apartment. Wendy took her children and moved to the apartment of couple Robert Donahoe and Gail Webb near Dallas, Texas. While John was in jail, he spent most of his time writing numerous threatening letters to Wendy. He was released from jail on August 4, 1991, and vowed to make his threats a reality. The next morning on August 5, 1991, John went to a pawn shop in Plano, Texas, and purchased a 22 caliber pistol and some ammunition. John then did some digging and was able to find out where Wendy was staying. He drove to Dallas and arrived at Gail and Bob's place at around 10 o'clock in the evening. He knocked on the door and realized Wendy was inside. When they realized it was John, they attempted to slam the door on him, but they slammed the door on his arm. Robert called 911 while Wendy and Gail tried keeping the door shut. John was 5'8", 190 pounds, and was not able to overpower both women. Giving up on pushing the door, John decided to fire his pistol into the door, and that finally allowed him entrance into the apartment. He got a hold of Wendy, forced her into the doorway, pistol whipped her, and shot her multiple times until she died from her wounds. Wendy laid there in the doorway, but angry John decided to re-enter the apartment. He found Gail and assaulted her. After physically assaulting her, he shot her a total of seven times. Although one of the shots was to the temple, Gail survived her injuries. Robert was still on the phone with authorities in a different room, but he decided to come out where John was and was shot at, but John missed the shot. After shooting at Robert, John left the apartment. While attempting to flee the scene, the manager of the apartment was running away in order to call for help, and John shot at him as well, but he missed. Still on the run, John encountered a police officer, and he told the officer that he was getting out of the area as soon as possible because there was a crazy man shooting a gun. Unbeknownst to the officer, he was actually talking to the killer, so John was let go. John was able to get to his car and drove back to Plano and parked his car in an alley behind a bowling ball building. John walked to the front of the building and noticed a young man by the name of Clay in the parking lot. 
John asked Clay for a ride, but Clay responded that it was not his car. John asked again, but this time took out his gun and pointed it at Clay. In seeing that, Clay complied. Clay and John got in the car and attempted to drive away, but the owner of the vehicle, Michael Carr, stopped them before they were able to leave the parking lot. Michael noticed that something was off, so without any questions, he drove John to where he requested to be taken. John took refuge at the house of the mother of one of his children. He spent the night, but the very next morning, he drove back to Dallas and went right back to the apartment where he killed his wife, Wendy. Little did he know that police were still near the scene of the crime, and as soon as he saw a police officer, he ran to a nearby shopping mall. Authorities chased him, but John made it inside of the mall, and there was a two-hour standoff with police. The standoff ended when a SWAT team intervened with their weapons to subdue John. When trial began, John's crime qualified for capital murder because of the aggravated factor of burglary. He broke into the apartment in order to kill Wendy. John's defense team, however, tried to argue that it was not capital murder because he was standing outside of the front door of the apartment and committed the murder from outside of the actual apartment. Defense did not win their argument and John was indicted on capital murder charges on November 19, 1991, which also qualified for the death penalty. During trial, many people testified against John about his negative behavior, including neighbors and an ex-wife. In May of 1992, a jury found John guilty and he was sentenced to death. A few years later, in June of 1995, after automatic appeals, the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals confirmed his conviction and sentence. In the year 2000, Texas Attorney General John Corrin made a confession and admitted that Dr. Walter Quijano, who was an expert witness for the prosecution, offered racially biased testimony at a capital punishment hearing of another death row prisoner's case. That inmate was Victor Saldano. Dr. Quijano was quoted saying, because Saldano is Hispanic, this was a factor weighing in favor of future dangerousness. Attorney General John Corrin examined six other cases in which Dr. Quijano testified and in June of 2000, it was concluded that those six cases, with one of them being John Alba's case, were tainted by racially biased testimonies from Dr. Quijano. This investigation led to all six death sentences being vacated for each case. In August of 2000, it became official, and the U.S. Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals vacated John's death sentence. With his death sentence being vacated, a new sentencing hearing was held for John. During this new hearing, John said that he did not mean to kill his wife and that it was just a bad reaction. He also claimed that the gun he purchased on the day of the murder was only purchased to protect himself from his cousin. A new jury resentenced John to death in March of 2001. After automatic appeals, the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals affirmed the sentence in April of 2003. John was set to be executed on May 25, 2010 in Texas by method of lethal injection. For his final meal, he had two fried pieces of chicken breast, two fried chicken thighs, four fried pork chops, two beef enchiladas, two pork enchiladas, and two cheese enchiladas. He also had one bowl of pico de gallo, a whole bucket of ketchup, onion rings, salad, one onion, six slices of white bread, and six cans of Coke. On John's execution day, members of Wendy's family came to witness the execution, and two of his children did as well. John was quoted saying, I am sorry for taking someone so precious to you and to my kids. I wish I could go back and change it, but I know I can't. He then looked at his loved ones and said, Thanks for being beside me. I appreciate you always standing by me in everything y'all have done. Just tell everyone I love them. You all will be okay. I will too. Okay, Warden, do it. His execution began and John was quoted saying that he could taste the chemicals. I am starting to go. Those were the last words he uttered before he lost consciousness. He was pronounced dead at 6.19 p.m. Thank you all for watching another episode of Death Row Executions. If you enjoyed this story, please give it a like and comment in the comment section below.